Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. I am Debbie Cox Bolton, CEO of the New Deal. And it is my it is my absolute honor to welcome everybody here to Detroit for our 2023 Ideas Summit. So as we get underway, I just wanted to start by thanking a few people. It's so good to see you all, friends. I uh, just want to single out and thank, of course, Helen Milby, our visionary founder. Our board members, advisory council members, um, our event sponsors, our donors who were with us all year long, and of course the incredible team at New Deal. This is truly a family and a community, and I'm so grateful to every single one of you for being part of it. So we gather here today in Detroit to kick off this idea summit at a particularly challenging time for our country. The COVID health emergency may be over, but the road to recovery is still long. We still have to deal with the mental and economic impacts people are feeling, and we have to address long-standing inequities so that we can truly rebuild a post-COVID America that works better for everyone. At the same time, we face other massive threats, climate change, the rolling back of women's reproductive rights, continuing attacks on our democracy, and a politics that is too often filled with hate and division. But despite all of that, I want to tell you why I have hope, incredible hope, and why I'm excited to be here with you today. We're also going to preview a couple top line numbers from a poll that we did talking about how Americans feel about government and democracy. So by far the first thing that gives me hope is you all. State and local leaders, you are on the front lines of virtually every single issue facing this country, from choice, gun violence, implementing the American Rescue Plan and the recovery, and it's only increasingly becoming true that, that you are where it's at. State legislators have debated more than 400 bills on our democracy just since January. Mayors and county officials are producing climate action plans and building affordable housing, and literally $350 billion of American Rescue Plan money is flowing through states and localities. So to all the state and local New Deal leaders who are with us today and who are with us around the country, I just want to say thank you. Your passion and your persistence and your innovation and your impact is inspiring, and it gives me hope, and I know it gives everybody in this room hope. It's no accident that we're in Michigan uh, for this Ideas Summit because state and local leaders in Michigan are playing a critical role and we have lessons to learn from them. They had the biggest wins in the country last November, as you probably know, picking up all constitutional offices and flipping both chambers of the legislature for the first time in 40 years. And now that they're in power, they're turning their common sense agenda that they campaigned on into a governing platform. They're strengthening democracy and investing in the things that Michiganders care about, like affordable housing and childcare and education and broadband. They're protecting choice and protecting and addressing gun violence. So I'm excited to be here in Detroit where we can learn from them about what they did, take those lessons back to where we live. Another reason I am full of hope is because of this historic opportunity we have with the investment that's being made in America thanks to federal funding. Federal funds from the American Rescue Plan are already having an impact across the country, and investments that will be coming and are coming from the Bipartisan Infrastructure Deal and the Inflation Reduction Act will help us pay to fix roads and bridges, to address climate change, ensure Americans have access to clean water and quality internet. And this being Infrastructure Week, I think it's important to just point out that infrastructure now is no longer, infrastructure week is no longer a joke, that we actually have funding to really address it, and that's thanks to the Biden administration. So taken together, that investment in America is really a once in a generation opportunity. We can make a huge difference with state and local leaders leading the way in changing people's lives. So over the next few days, we're going to be talking about some of the best practices of using the use of those federal funds across a variety of issues and see what people can take home. And while it's important that we do that for you here so that we can learn from each other and share with each other, it's equally as important that we're telling these stories to the American people. For decades, Americans have been told that government is the problem. Government is the enemy. And I think this has not only undermined Americans' confidence in government, but has set the stage for, our, for the attacks on our democracy as a whole. 
You know, when I went to Washington, D.C. as an intern 30 years ago, I literally remember having my mind blown that I, there were thousands of people in Washington who woke up every day thinking about how to make people's lives better. And fast forward 30 years later, and working with all of you, I still feel that exact same way. And too many Americans don't understand that, and we have to tell them. To counter the messages that seek to divide us, to um, undermine the ties that bind us, and the very systems of government and democracy, we've got to double down on telling those stories. The New Deal's committed to doing that. We've been tracking American Rescue Plan funding, and we're going to continue to do that. We have new uh, examples out today I hope you'll take a look at. I think I'm supposed to click a thing here to show you that. <laughs> uh, so we will keep doing that. Please tell us what you're doing so that we can keep highlighting those those um, those great success stories. And another way we'll be doing that this year is also this will be an ideas challenge year. So New Deal leaders, we encourage you to tell us what you're doing. We will be partnering again with Governing Magazine uh, to uh, for the winners of the ideas challenge to be featured there. So earlier I mentioned a poll that we did. This is the first ever New Deal poll that we did in advance of the summit. And I wanted to just tell you a couple things that we learned that I hope will help set the stage for our con the context for here and also kind of underscore why I have so much hope. First, we asked people about their feelings about democracy. And we found that democracy remains a huge concern for Americans, and it's actually driving how they vote in the polls. I think I've got some slides here. So nearly half of our respondents to our poll rated American democracy as poor or terrible, and only 25% said good or excellent. That's concerning, <laughs> to, say the, to say the least. And across party lines, as it says there, not more than 36% of respondents rated our democracy above average. When it comes to the relationship between our democracy and voting, fully 63% of Americans said that their, that their feelings about democracy influenced their vote in the 2022 elections, with the highest percentage, 48%, saying it influenced their vote a lot, and only 4% saying it did not influence their vote in 2022 at all. So people, are, the people care, people are worried. And the good news, even better news coming out of our poll, was that there was vast agreement on things that we could do, common sense things that appealed to people across party lines. 77%, for example, agree that increasing penalties for people who uh, threaten poll workers should be enacted. 78% agree that people who threaten voters should be penalized. And 65% agree including a majority of Republicans, that people should be able to, to register the same day and have their vote count. These are things that were highlighted in our, by our democracy working group uh, in our democracy playbook that was released in February, along with other um, state and local ideas to increase the access to vote, protect our election integrity, and increase civic engagement. I hope you will all check that out. Tomorrow we'll be hearing from one of the co-chairs of that group Michigan State, uh, Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson, who will be telling us what she's doing here with her community partners um, on all of those fronts. We also wanted to find out about how Americans feel about their government and elected leaders. Probably not surprising, respondents gave pretty low marks when it comes to trust in government at all levels. So what do people want from their elected officials? Ooh, sorry, that was another mm -hmm. slide you could have seen in this one. 82%, the vast majority, said that they're looking for leaders who can get stuff done. This actually gave me a lot of hope because I work with all of you every day and that's, that's what I know you are doing. There were nuances in some of this, um, in that. For example, Republicans said that they would prefer, they, that they also were looking for someone who's a fighter, where Democrats said that they were looking for more of a consensus builder, but across the board, across party lines, it was by far the overwhelming uh, response was they were looking for people to get stuff done. A challenge to overcome is that people do not know what we're doing. I don't think I'm gonna be able to, can someone flip the next one? That's not working anymore. Well, I'll just tell you, you'll have to take my word for it. 45% um, of respondents 
Here we go. Um, when we asked, we're not aware of a single piece of meaningful legislation that's passed Congress, Congress and been signed by the Biden administration in the last two and a half years, despite us knowing that so much amazing work has been done. And also, when we did, when we told them about it and said, these are things that are passed, how, do you, does, how does that make you feel about government? It, let me see if I've got the numbers here. Only um, about 40% that made them feel more positive about government. Um, where the rest were unmoved. So importantly, what we're going to need to do is not just tell people what we're doing, but we're going to have to tell them how it affects them, why it should matter to them. So we're going to be talking about that over the next two days. How do we tell these successes? How do we clearly communicate the successes and connect those dots? In the coming weeks, we're going to be telling you more information about this poll, and um, but there's two clear takeaways. One that people continue to be concerned about democracy and we can rebuild confidence with solutions that are popular across party lines. And second, people are clear that they want leaders to focus on results and put progress above politics. That's what you all do every, every day. That's why we're here. We're gonna be talking about those ideas that move the needle. And again, I just wanna thank you for being with us. Thank you for um, all you do every day and for being part of this community. Together, I think we can change people's perceptions about government and about the work that we do um, and rebuild those bonds of trust amongst each other uh, as a country. So thank you again for being here with us today.